Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about improper integrals. So let's start by remembering what we can do with a definite integral. So with a definite integral, we get the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to big F of b minus big F of a, where big F prime of x is equal to little f of x. Now this only works if our original function f is defined on the interval from a to b, um, or if a and b are not infinite. If we have one of these cases, so either a is infinite, b is infinite, or f is not defined on the whole interval from a to b, maybe it's undefined at a point, let's say, we'll have to use the method of improper. So let's take a look at our first example, where, in our case, b is infinite. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to change our upper bound to b. So we're going to change infinity to b. And we will write this as 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. And then we'll just get rid of that infinity and replace it with a b. And then we're just going to take the limit as b goes to infinity. Okay. So when we do that, we have the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to b of f of x dx, and remember that f is just 1 over x squared. Okay. Step 3, we're just going to evaluate the integral. So we just keep that limit in there, b goes to infinity of negative 1 over x from 1 to b. And then we're going to plug this in. So use the fundamental theorem of calculus. We get the limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 over b minus negative 1 over 1. Okay, and finally we're just going to take the limit. So we get 0 minus negative 1 or 1. And so the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. For our next example, let's look at something a little uh, different than it, but in the same vein. So we're looking at the integral from 1 to infinity, the same bounds. 1 over x instead of x squared dx. And let's go ahead and evaluate this integral using the same method as before. So we can rewrite this indefinite integral as the limit as b approaches infinity from 1 to b of 1 over x dx. And we know that this is the natural log of the absolute value of x um, from 1 to b. And we're still taking the limit as b goes to infinity. So now we can just use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we get the natural log of b minus the natural log of 1. Still taking that limit as b goes to infinity. And the natural log of 1 is 0, so we take the limit as b goes to infinity of the natural log of b. And as we approach infinity, so does the natural log of it, so this is infinity. So the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x. So now let's take a look at the general case if we have an integral from some number to infinity of 1 over x to a power dx. So as we've seen, it diverges if it's equal to 1. 
and it converges if it's equal to 2. And in fact, it converges if p or our exponent on the x is greater than 1, and it diverges if p is less than or equal to 1. And Now let's take a look at an integral where we have negative infinity to infinity. So we have two bounds here. So our procedure is a little different. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to split up the integral into two parts. Okay, so we're going to split it up from negative infinity to any number, let's just say 0, and the integral from the same point as our upper bound on the first one to infinity. So if we have a function here, we're just going to pick any point. We're just going to call it 0 for this case, and we're going to add the left side's integral to the right side's integral. And that's all we're really doing when we split up this integral. So we have 0, uh, we have negative infinity to 0 of x e to the negative x squared dx plus the integral from 0 to infinity of x e to the negative x squared dx. And now we have two improper integrals. So we have two improper's. And what we're going to do with these two improper integrals is we're just going to evaluate them each separately. So we know how to handle the integral from 0 to infinity. So we can just go ahead and take the limit as b goes to infinity from 0 to b of x e to the negative x squared dx. And we know here by a little u substitution that u is equal to negative x squared, so du is equal to negative 2x dx. So we'll put a negative 2 here, balance it out with a negative 1 half. We can pull that outside of the integral, and we can also pull that outside of the limit. So here we get negative one half the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from zero to b, negative two, so this whole thing is our du, and we have e to the u, so e to the u. Now we didn't change our bounds though, so we're gonna have to do that. And so if x is 0, u is also 0. And if x is b, we have negative b squared. So when we finally evaluate this integral, it's going to be negative 1 half the limit as b goes to infinity of e to the negative b squared minus e to the 0. For our final example, let's take a look at a situation where the integrand diverges somewhere. So in our case, 1 over x cubed diverges somewhere between negative 1 and 2. And over here to the right of the screen, we see a sketch of 1 over x cubed. And 1 over x cubed is not defined and diverges along the line x equals 0. So we have to split up our integral into two parts, uh, negative 1 to 0. And we're going to just add that to 0 to 2. And let's just write 1 over x cubed dx in both cases. So now how do we actually integrate 2? or integrate these two integrals. 
Well, we know that from negative 1 to 0, we're approaching 0 from the right. And it doesn't exist at 0, so we can't plug it in directly. But what we can do is take the limit, and we'll just have b as a dummy variable here. And we have b approaches 0 from the left, because we're going to the left uh, as we approach 0. Negative 1 to 0 of 1 over x cubed dx. And in the same vein, we're going to take the limit as a approaches 0 from the right, because what we're doing in this situation is we're approaching it from the right. We'll take the integral of a to 2 of 1 over x cubed dx, and let's go ahead and fix that 0 on the first integral, replace that with a b. So let's start by making a little side note here uh, that the indefinite integral of 1 over x cubed dx is negative 1 over 2x squared. And we can see that just by letting uh, at 1 over x to the third equal x to the negative 3 and just using the power rule. So that's going to be x to the negative 2 over negative 2 and when we clean it up, we get that guy. So let's go ahead, back to our original problem, and just evaluate these integrals. So we have the limit as b approaches 0 from the left of negative 1 over 2b squared. And then we're going to do minus... 1, uh, negative 1 over 2 times negative 1 squared. And this is the left-hand integral. And then we're going to add the limit as a approaches 0 from the right of negative 1 over 2 times 2 squared minus negative 1 over 2 times a squared. And that's our second integrand. So now let's clean up what we can, and we'll start by taking a look at our numbers here. So minus minus 1 over 2 times negative 1 squared is 1 half. And negative 1 over 2 times 2 squared is uh, negative 1 eighth. So this is 4 minus 1 over 8, or 3 eighths. So we have 3 eighths plus the limit as b approaches 0 from the left of negative 1 over 2b squared uh, plus the limit as a approaches 0 from the right of 1 over 2a squared. So now we have to see what happens here. Now as we approach 0 from the left, um, we're now looking at the function 1 over 2x squared. So it's an even function that looks like this, right? So negative 1 over 2x squared looks like this. Um, so if we take this negative value and we negate it and add the positive value to it, um, because we have 1 over 2a squared. So we're taking this area and we're subtracting the red area from it. Since it's even, that tells us that the blue area is equal to the red area. And that tells us that this whole thing is actually 0. 
Thus, the integral from negative 1 to 2, let's go ahead and make that our light blue that we're used to, of 1 over x cubed dx is equal to 3 eighths. I hope you have learned a lot about improper integrals as we'll need them later on when we start talking about sequences and series and whether series converge or